Hey everyone, this is uh, <coughs> Dylan Hovey, and this morning we're going to be playing some five color Death Shadow. I'm going to be playing this before my IQ I'm going to go to tomorrow. So it's all pretty self explanatory. I've been playing a very similar list, been changing a couple things like the amount of removal spells, counter spells, Lilianas, <coughs> and then my sideboard. I've been fooling around with a, with a bigger. With like what I want my last couple cards to be. Um, I guess I'm messing around with a with this Kozilek's return. I don't know if this is going to end up being in the deck or not. And then this hostage shaker. I don't know if it's going to be like a Kataki or a Hazret or an Eidolon. I gotta hopefully figure that out today. Let me just bring this over here. So that's part of today's goal. <clears throat> but yeah, I've been, real I've been really liking the deck here. It's been enjoyable, <clears throat> enjoyable to play. And I think it's very good. I think it's very good against the various combo decks that are running around right now. So let me just update my information, then we'll Hang on, let me just work with, I recently got a new, a new second monitor, so I gotta figure out how to get my, uh, hack, I am going to the IQ on, there we go, I am going, I'm not playing the challenge today, no, no, not today, I don't, I've got some other stuff going on, I might play it off stream, but, I'm not going to stream it. So let's jump into it. And competitive modern. Join. Play league match and we'll get this going. I might play it off stream to tell you the truth if I'm going to like make sure that I'm ready to go for tomorrow. Because I don't know about this card. I don't know about this card. I don't know if I want the third one of these. I don't know if I want a third stub. And I don't know if I want the second Grim Flare. That's kind of where I'm at at the moment. So. Just kind of figure all that out. <clears throat> oh, there we go. Oh, my opponent's three and one. Holy shnikes. I do like how threat dense this deck has become recent in the recent testing sessions I've had with the two Grim Flares. So we got one land, we're on the play, and it doesn't, if this was a green land, I would snap this off, but I think I want to ship this. Yep, and I'll keep this hand. This hand's really aggressive. And we'll put that on top. So we'll cycle this, bobble ourselves, see if we want to shuffle away the top card. Because <clears throat> I'm totally, I'm okay just playing Tarmogoyf. Traverse. One, two. Yeah, we can keep that because that's that's going to be turned on. Okay, so we're playing against Tron, which is super. I'll take this expedition map. So now our number one goal is going to be get this Death Shadow into play as soon as possible. All right, there's the power plant. Surprised they didn't play Forest. Maybe they hit another. Okay, so 
I guess I'm going to get Tomagoyf into play first. Because Tomagoyf's a 4 5 and it's going to start the clock. I'm going to get a breeding pool in case I draw stub. The next turn, I might just like traverse for a street wraith. Or if I find a way to hurt myself one more point, I'll traverse for two shadows. There's the stirrings. Surprised I didn't do this last turn. We could get could get stubbed up. <clears throat> okay, so there's the star. So I know three of their cards. Okay, so now I just go traverse for Street Wraith, Cycle Street Wraith, Shockland, play two Death Shadows. And I don't think this can grow Tarmogoyf at all, but I might as well just do this now. I don't really think there's a draw that would make me change what I'm doing. I could get a Fetch Land, but I think I would like, well... So fetch land makes these guys. Fetch land puts me to twelve. Shockland puts me to ten. Which makes them threes. So four, ten, dead. That's a three turn clock as opposed to four, eight. Yeah, so it's either way, so I might as well just get a Street Wraith. And then I'll just crack this on their turn, because they might have an answer to it. And then probably something like Team or Battle Rage plus Land kills my opponent, I think. Because an instant grows time for to five, makes these eight plus five, so eight, twelve, seventeen, yeah. Brew the spy, the magic guy, thank you very much for the auto host. Oh, my wife's not going to like that coffee this morning. I'm going to have to finish it up. I did not do a very good job. <clears throat> oh, I forgot to put my Nightbot music on. Okay. So they played this tower, they played the star, they played this. So if they have another piece, then they're just probably going to kill me. But 5, 10. Yeah, so we just are going to attack for 14. We can actually kill them through a Worm Coil Engine, I think, next turn. Which is pretty sweet. I would have liked to see a discard spell because taking this Oblivion Stone, because if they have another Tron piece, then this O Stone is going to wipe the board and end the game. We needed just one more way to hurt ourselves. I guess we're getting punished if I'd have got the fetch land. <clears throat> but then you don't know exactly what would have happened with the draws here. We definitely had some live ones there. Traverse, Street Wraith. Traverse gets it, Street Wraith got it. Dotsie's got it, Team of Battle Rage got it. But, you know, sometimes that's not how it happens. All right, bro, don't kill me. Beat a worm coil, but I can't beat this O stone. 
So if my opponent's got third Tron police, O stone exactly, which they do. Ah, oh, that's sad. And now we're just dead as a doorknob. Because they got this coming down. All right, I mean, I'm gonna attack. They'll pop this, then I'll thought seize. They don't inquisition them. We didn't even draw the thought seize to get this worm coil. <laughs> they even get to draw a card off their star. stone okay so I have to basically draw death shadow into team or battle rage and I've got a chance but then I don't even have a chance because I have to block with it yeah we're just dead because this thing will kill us I don't have to block with it but I had to go death shadow I guess I had to go because it doesn't have haste I had to go exactly death shadow into what are we doing here I need to delete all my freeform, um, freeform decks. So bring in the counter spells and the hostage taker. Cut my removal spells and shave. I kind of like shaving like Tarmogoyf in this matchup because. <clears throat> They bring in relics, but I guess I might as well just shave a uh, traverse because they bring in a uh, relic progenitus. So it makes that a little worse. Tarmogoyf at least attacks. So we'll go like this. <clears throat> yeah, I have to go through and. Get rid of this Discord. That's my dashboard. Oh, I guess I should pop my chat out. Let me do that. Yeah, I'd like to get to some more modern decks, but I've like between work and stuff I just haven't had the time for for like all the new stuff just do some more like do some more brewing or play different things okay so this hands discard spell into Tarmogoyf into death shadow on three so I'll keep this Tarmogoyf will be a 3-4 when it attacks, at least. And we're, I guess, only halfway to Delirium. But... We have a lot of... I mean, we have seven more discard spells in the deck. <clears throat> oh, man, I messed up with the coffee this morning. There's a whole pot of it left. Alright, um, I guess Overgrown Tomb is the land we want. Looking to take like a map or a stirrings. Oh gosh, is that just natural? That's literally just natural Tron. All right, I'm gonna take the star. Take the cantrip. And then just hope my opponent doesn't rip a, doesn't rip anything. Oh, that's gross. This might be a quick first match. I hope they just draw an expedition map for days. Well, that's one of the better draws for me, so I'll get Watery Grave. So 
So I wonder if I can afford to play Liliana next turn. Or if I need to play Death Shadow. Well, let's inform our decision. Yeah, now I'm just going to play Death Shadow in Tarm of Life. Turn the heat up a little bit. And then, like, Team or Battle Rage is a great draw next turn. Because it gives me Delirium also, so I just Rage the Death Shadow fetch. Yeah, Team Battle Rage just kills my opponent. So don't have a payoff, dude. Karn, that's beatable. Takes a life. Alright, that's pretty good as well. So I don't think I'm actually going to play Liliana. I think I'm just going to hold that up. So we're going to send Death Shadow at Karn, Tarm of Life at our opponent. Hopefully I get to stub something, because that'll turn on um, Delirium. <coughs> send this right here. Grows Goyf, which is cool. Always about growing Goyf. It's one of my favorite pastimes. I've got five cards and we have three of them. We just really need to hope that they don't hit something like. I don't know. Um, even a basic force would kind of suck. <clears throat> Alright, stubbing this. Don't be a warp coil engine. Okay. So four cards. This is gonna make green mana, which is kind of scary. So I think I'm actually going to stub this. So it's gonna turn on delirium, <laughs> which like isn't super great, but it makes it so both my creatures can attack through this worm coil engine next turn. So I can go Liliana, I can traverse for a land Liliana and Edict, and I think that's what we're going to do. I can't really get Hostage Shaker because it's too expensive. So I guess we get Delta. <coughs> Edict our opponent. And then they trade with one one of my creatures dies. Probably the Death Shadow. And then they probably just Well, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what they do. Because they do have to block one of these. I assume they put the Death Toucher in front of the Death Shadow <coughs> and then just not block the Tarma Life and then attack the Liliana. Ancient Grudge would be a good draw. The Life Linker. Okay, so they just trade the board. This probably means they have backup, which sucks, but at least we get to keep our Liliana around. Don't have another thing. Alright, map's fine. Matt's probably gonna go get them a green source. Which is not I mean that's okay because we get to go Thoughtseize and tick up. <coughs> oh, there's just towers. So that means they've got a they've got an Ulamog. Actually, uh, okay, so they definitely have an Ulamog. So let's Thoughtseize our opponent. Take target Ulamog. Show me a new Lamog. Then we give them one draw step, which is sweet. And it's gonna have to be like a natural draw step too. Oh, Ugin. Eugene.
<coughs> so now we get him for one for the, the, the dead next turn. I have to draw like a natural colorless payoff. Or I guess a star to make mana. Now we just got a one time. Wonder, I think they were supposed to go get <coughs> a green source with this because you still could cast Ugin even with a green source and it gives you like more draws here with the ancient stirrings. All right. What do we have coming? Blood say Meyer. Yeah, I think my opponent made a mistake there. I'm not sure what mattered, but they just limited their outs. So on the draw, I wonder if I can get away like Is this, I guess on the draw this is just too slow, even if we're just recurring, because the only thing we're gonna do with this is recur Street Wraith, <clears throat> which is pretty big game, like making Death Shadow larger, getting me a little card advantage. But I think I need all these cards. I'm pretty, I'm a little iffy on this, but like, if we just top deck the Hostage Taker, last game we could have just eaten the worm coil engine i don't remember if we had four lands or not <clears throat> oh almost done my first cup of bad coffee Okay, so <clears throat> we have two disruption spells and we're three quarters of the way to delirium, so I'm gonna keep this hand. We definitely need to get a little fortunate for this hand to work out, but we've got the we have like all of it except the death shadow. That's better than seeing a map on one. So I'm definitely gonna fetch because I'm 100 percent using my mana. Okay, that's that's the fourth card type, which is nice. I should have let off with that land because that's the worst land in our deck. So let's go here. I think I'm gonna start off with an Inquisition. Just get Overgrown Tomb. I'd like to see a Bobble. Ancient Grudge is pretty good. So this is the one that I can kill. Okay, so they have double payoff. All right, that's a beatable hand. We got two out of the three pieces rolled up. There's the tower. So they're just holding. I think I'm gonna fetch. I just don't wanna draw another land and I wanna thin out my deck. Should have got a blue source. Okay. So they're drawing Sanctum. So I can go get Death Shadow, which puts me in trouble if my opponent has the exact piece in the next two random draw steps for Karn. But I think we just gotta kinda hope that doesn't happen. If we can get this guy down, then we're at least live. Like we're gonna do five damage to ourselves next turn. Depending on what we draw, there's a chance that we can team or battle rage our way into a win. Just hope my opponent doesn't land a Karn. <clears throat> they do land a Karn and they got Eugene to back it up and we're in trouble. Hopefully this isn't a fatal push either. Don't push my guy, come on. Alright, sweet. Alright, so there's Goyf. 
Blooming Marsh is good for the home team. That is not good for the home team. So I'm going to have to take <coughs> Ugin with our next Thoughtseize because we can beat Karn. But we can't beat Ugin. I just really hope my opponent doesn't have two Ugins. Unless we draw Stub. Alright, I'm going to start off by thought season just to get some more information and figure out what I want to do with this Traverse the Ubin World. Alright, they've got Oblivion Stone too. So I guess I just take Ugin. God, the other stone's gross. So I guess I just play Tarmogoyf, then hope to draw Stubborn Denial and defend myself from the Karn. Because they're going to have exactly 8 mana, so they're going to be able to wipe the board. I don't really want to have them play Karn on an open, because Karn's going to be a 2-4-1 anyways. If I don't play the Tarmogoyf, then they go like, eat, tick up, eat. So I think I'm going to make them, and then I've got like, a couple live draws to deal with this Karn. Which is, it's just pretty bad either way. Maybe my opponent will mess up and play. Yeah, no. I just couldn't deal with the Ugin in play. <laughs> Stub. Oh, that's pretty bad. So now the Karn's gonna come down. We're just dead six ways to Sunday. <coughs> and the Karn is gonna go get, like, because it's going to crack this sanctum. Let's go get Death Shadow. Oh, we were just like a turn too slow. Which is sucks. This ghost gets warm quail engine, I would assume. Unless they've got I mean it might get Ugin, right? Creature. Creature doesn't get Ugin. Ulamog. Nice. If I don't have it, then this Tarma Wife might chew through this Karn. Because theoretically, if they go like tick up, we ditch up up to K. And then if they don't have the land for Ulamog. But I think they would have just gotten one coil engine if they didn't have the land for Ulamog, right? We're more than likely dead. Good way to start the stream here with some Tron action. Probably should have left up this green, this blue source, just so I can use this. Yep, there it is. So we're good. Yep, we'll go on to the next match. <clears throat> Man, Moto's tweaking out a lot. Maybe I'll restart it. while we're waiting for this to go up. Um, my name is Dylan Hubby, and I'm a sponsored streamer with the Cardholder Network. Thank you 
very much for tuning in today. If you guys appreciate what you see, please hit the follow button. If you ever want to see part of my streams that you missed, you can check out my YouTube channel, which is linked below the stream. I love talking magic on Twitter, so you should check me out there. And if you ever need magic online singles, you should check out Card Hoarder. So that's, that's my shameless plug. Besides that, I hope everyone's having a good start to their good start to their day, and I appreciate y'all being here to hang out. Uh, that was unfortunate. <clears throat> I hate when I play against Tron. I lose. I just hate Tron. I wish Tron was in the format. I don't mind Eldrazi. I actually kind of like Eldrazi Tron. Like, Eldrazi Tron is a good, good deck. But I am not a fan of OG Tron. I would appreciate it if they just <laughs> got rid of Tron lands from the format. But then you kind of, like, tort other people's investments, which kind of sucks. Maybe if they just got rid of, like, a sphere... That's probably something reasonable they could do. But let's rattle off four in a row. Yeah, this hand's good. Definitely gonna get Overgrown Tomb with our first land. We're three quarters of the way to Delirium. Opponent Mulligans, there's nothing that tickles my fancy more than my opponent Mulligans. And I'm playing a discard deck. So we're gonna cycle before fetching because we would not mind hitting another land. Yep, we did. So now these traverses are more than likely going to turn into just Death Shadows. We can actually play a turn 2 Death Shadow if we hit it, which is one of the higher echelon of draws. You can ask um, Jerry Maguire MTG. I have played. Oh, this is this is rough. I've played a marginal amount of Legacy. Um, nothing super. So what they do is put a card on the bottom. Like not a lot, but I have played some Legacy. You can ask for sure. I might end up Teamer Battle Raging one of my opponent's creatures so I can go get Death Shadow, even though that feels pretty mopey. Okay, so there's the Ink Moth. And then here's the double ornithopter. <laughs> okay, so I think I'm actually going to play this land tapped. No sense in doing more damage myself than I have to. <laughs> My first ever Legacy Tournament. I got married earlier in the year. And all of my friends came down for SCGDC. And I was just, you know, I was just chilling out here. I was going to just plan to play in the Classic and hang out with them because they don't play Legacy. And they all came down and for like a wedding gift, they paid my entry and then gave me Bug Delver to play. Don't have another land. That's okay. They gave me Bug Delver to play. All right, let's cycle. Come on, give me something. I'll probably have to one-shot my opponent. So I'm going to get this, and then just eat it to put a little bit of pressure off of me, and hopefully they attack this. Um, and actually, was 9-3 and three with three rounds to go, and I had a chance to top eight. My first ever, well, that's not my first ever Legacy Tournament. Okay, that's bad. Come on, attack my Liliana. Attack my Liliana. Yes. Okay, so now we're going to get Delirium. And it appears I'm going to get a combat. Okay, so... Fatal Push this. The problem is if I Fatal Push... So, they put a counter on everything. If I go Fetch Lock to 5, they put a counter on everything. It's 2... One, two, it's five on a dot. 
So I've got to one-shot them, I think. And I think the best way to do that is to traverse for one shadow. Play it. So I need to get below three. I don't think that I can um, push anything. Okay, why do all this play 19 matters? I'm testing 50% of the meta, has ley lines, and it has it's all the all lose. I want to play some number of fetch lands and one tiger and one forest for three destructive revelry in the sideboard. Is this horrible? I also also why is it straight mounts across the board? This is literally helping. Um Yeah, I don't know about that Jerry Wire MTG. Like that's a bit too specific. Bulls Daddy, um, not playing in the open today. I'm just I got an IQ tomorrow, so I'm just jamming a couple games for that. So play this, and then I'll pass. I think I'm gonna let my opponent hit me for five, because then it's gonna turn on Death Shadow for the Team of Battle Rage, the old one-shot rage. I can traverse for a Street Wraith if I need to. Yeah, that's a bit too. I mean, if there's anybody in the chat that knows, they should help you out with that, because that's just a bit too, um, just a bit too much for me. Okay, can I catch me on? You're, you're playing there, Bulls Daddy? If you are, then good luck, sir. McLovin shirt on? What are you playing? Okay, so let's think. Two, four, this is five. So if my opponent just taps this, the problem is I can't beat, they'd have to have, no, they can't have Galvanic Blast and cast it, right? So I will just take this shot. Because their last card's Master of Ethereum. So they pump. Death Shadow, nice, man. You're playing Grixis or the five color version or the four, or I guess the Traverse version because you can play the Traverse version in a couple different ways. Okay. Yeah, so we're gonna get to one shot our opponent next turn, I'm pretty sure. So two, I'm taking five, and they can't have Galvanic Blast and Way to Cast it because their last card's Master of Ethereum. All right, you got it, sir. And then we deal 24. Okay, so before my opponent, before this Ink Moth Nexus stops being a creature, push it. We go to one, and we deal exactly 24 damage. Now let's make sure we get the Blood Crypt here, so we don't moto out. And we got perfect information. So our opponent is super dead. Take 24, my friend. Get that out of here. Ooh, we're gonna plug my computer in. So in this matchup, I like a lot of cards. Then I'm kind of like medium on the hostage taker. It does take a cranial plating, but 
I don't know how good that is, to tell you the truth. I don't like stubs. So let's let's make this smaller. I don't like stubs. I don't like veils. Um, I like to cut some street rates, but not all of them, because I do want delirium. And then I make up the rest of it with cut and thought seizes. So, <coughs> I can cut one more thought seize, but I think that a thought seize is going to be better than a hostage taker most of the time. I just cut a land. So then the hostage taker comes in. So I cut a land. And I want to cut an overgrown tomb. Really on the last up home the next return. Yeah, that's that's the whole kit and caboodle there. I'm gonna finish this coffee up. And the McLovin shirt's pretty sweet. <sighs> All right, this hand's great. So we go. Our land is Bloodstained Mire, is Blood Crypt, Godless Shrine, Breathing Pool. Because then we have all five colors. And we can cast the spells in our hand. Alright, so a pretty explosive start from our opponent. Turn one Ravager. Alright, so there's a Godless Shrine. So we can just get this now to save a little bit of damage. Do you remember these Myers don't fetch breeding pool? No, oh, opponent's got a stub. But we gotta take this, we gotta take Edge Champion. We're not beating a resolved Edge Champion on turn two with this many artifacts. Okay, so the last card's Stub. My opponent gets in for one. And then in their upkeep, we're gonna just shoot this Ravager. And if it gets Stubbed, it gets Stubbed. Alternatively, I could play Tarmogoyf. But I think I wanna just begin to work through their hand. <clears throat> The nice thing is because we drew this Godless Shrine, I can actually fetch a basic swamp with this to play Lingering Souls, and this can be my green source. And we get Force Bite. And maybe they let it resolve, like, they can just move things around. Okay, no. So this dub's out of their hand. So, we're getting cracked for three. So now I can actually flash this back and then play Death Shadow if I want to. Okay, they're just going to eat this. I'd love another removal spell, another one mana play. Okay, so that was not that. So we get Breeding Pool. Flash that back there. They probably move over. I'm gonna sack a couple more things. Okay. So now Lingering Souls is gonna have to buy us quite a bit of time. Next turn we can play Souls and I guess we can't play Souls and Tarmogoyf. But the turn after that we'll be able to play Souls and Tarmogoyf. I need just one more removal spell. 
one more removal spell and I should be able to deal with this. Unless this, they have exactly... But they had Gal Blast, they wouldn't fire up with this. Hmm, okay. Oh, I guess they would. Sad. That was a good hand from us, too. We still got wrecked. But that happens. They, they like Affinity Die. Like, turn, turn one Etch Champion, or Ravager is difficult. I think I'm just going to submit, run it back. I have to restart Moto in between games, I think. Hopefully we get a W here so we don't start this league 0-2. Oh, oh and two would be sad. It would in fact be the worst that we could do two rounds into the league. It's expert analysis. first so his hand's pretty good we don't I need a creature like I need like a death shadow but besides that we're in pretty good shape so I think I get godless shrine and breeding pool alternatively I could get blood crypt and breeding pool because if I get blood crypt breeding pool then I can cast a ancient grudge before, because I'm going to need another land to cast Slingering Souls anyway, so I guess I am going to get Blood Crypt. Let's check out what our opponent's doing. So if I take Signal Pest, then I can push this. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Even though my opponent's going to get to get to uh, play this Ravager next turn. Play this um, steel overseer next turn. It didn't really matter what I what I took, I guess. Like alternatively, I could have taken the opal and then leaned on my green souls to deal with this um, ornithopter or this signal pest. Come on! Oh, they ripped a ravager. Okay. So they've got Steel Overseer Glimmer Void. Alright, that's pretty good, but not super great. God, that Ravager is just gonna like eat me alive. That was a very good top deck for my opponent. I guess I'm gonna wait for my opponent to commit to the board, and then I guess I'll. So there's a dark seal, so we know what they have. And then we're just gonna let him attack. And I think I'm still gonna push. So if I push this now, they only put one counter over here, but then the Steel Overseer becomes a big problem. I think I still just have to kill the Steel Overseer. So we let this happen. And then I'm just gonna kill the Overseer. Their last card is Glimmer Void. He couldn't have picked any better Ornithopter. 
That's 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 what playing Ornithopter is all about. The tilt value, man. Okay. So we need to draw land here. Pretty. If we draw land, then we're gonna have plenty of time to work around this. So I think I still grab breeding pool because. It lets us play more two mana plays. Land. Okay, well, Tarmogoyf means that my opponent at least has to move with this. They have to sacrifice all of their artifacts onto the. They have to go like one, two, I guess. And the Ornithopter is still there. This is unfortunate. I guess maybe I should have just killed the Ravager and like let them steal Overseer. But then they just like clock me in the air very, like a lot. So there's a Glimmer Void. I definitely could have tossed this Springleaf Drum, okay. One, two, three. So if they just sack these or these, then my opponent just eats my Tarmogoyf. Alternatively, I guess they can move everything to the Ink Moth. I guess I'm gonna make them do it. Hopefully they move things over to the Ink Moth. I'll move it to the Nexus. Move it to the Nexus. No, they just kept it, okay. Land. Well, that's the next best draw, I guess. Hopefully they don't hit a rip a gal blast. I'm surprised they sacked the Ornithopter. Cause like, this just means like, now with the, with like the Ravager, they're gonna race the Death Shadow anyways. I'm just gonna take this. So now the Ornithopter is lethal in the air. So I need I need a lingering souls. I need a land. Come on. God. They're drawing the Spire of Industry. So now I need to just rip a removal spell for this. Come on. Okay, thank God. So now I just block this. So now I've got to like think. I've got to let, I've basically like got to let my Death Shadow die. So I'm still in a lot of trouble. I think I push this now. Get it over here. And then if I rip another, like if I rip an ancient grudge, then I just clear their board. Or land to play Lingering Souls. Come on. Removal spell or land. God. <sighs> That's frustrating. So maybe I'm not supposed to block with my Tarmogoyf, but then if I don't block with Tarmogoyf, they just move this over. We just needed to hit land. There it was. 
There it always is. Now I have to fight for the cash, which is always sad. Couldn't you have used Rage and then pushed the Thopter? You should have used Battle Rage to trade with the Goyf. And trade with the Goyf, I think. Then push would have killed the Ornithopter plus Glimmer Void. So you're talking about when I chumped? So you're talking about earlier, right? Because I only had two mana. Right? So I couldn't... You're talking about, like, when I chumped with Goyf, just Battle Rage. When I traded with Goyf, Battle Rage the Goyf, and make him move it over? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, I just didn't get enough that game. Yeah, it sounds pretty good. We'll keep this. We can... We're going to 100% fetch. I mean, this is like another one-lander, but this is like what you sign up with when you play Death Shadow. This version especially without the arcane trips. Dude, I was up at I was up at 7. Wanted to get in before the uh, before the SCG and GP started. Mana Confluence. So we're playing humans. So if we get down Grimflare. Grimflare is pretty good against the humans deck because they just have a hard time blocking it to start. I don't think I could, like, all right, so they are drawing a land. So I think I just want to take this Reflector Mage because it interacts with my, um, Back to work. I think I'm just gonna take Reflector Mage. I could go Freebooter, Freebooter also. Maybe I'll just go Freebooter, Freebooter. But the Reflector Mage is just gonna mess with my Grim Flare. I really, you would take Vile. You're saying just keep them on one spell a turn. I just think I'm gonna win this game unless they if I draw a land, as long as they don't reflect your mage my Grim Flare. File keeps them on one spell a turn. Which I guess I can keep up with. So their hand's pretty clunky. Yeah, second. You're right, though. Second. So my, my. I think that I do want to take this reflector mage. Let's see. Hopefully, we hit a land here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the question here. So, if I att I think I just play Grim Flare because they're going to Freebooter, and if they Freebooter and like don't take my push, then I get to Inquisition and attack with Flare next turn. Because like I don't this Freebooter is probably gonna take my Fatal Push, and then this Meddling Mage is gonna name something else, but then I can take the Meddling Mage, or I can just beat over the top of them. I really want to stick a threat. I don't really want to not... I don't want to play passively at the moment. And I can just rage early to, like, set up this Grim Flare, to get this Grim Flare Delirium, and then just, like, dig me to a removal spell. So I think I'm going to play Grim Flare. And if my opponent freebooters me, my opponent freebooters me. They are going to get a card, but... I'm... Just like trying to lean on my opponent and impose impose some will here. Okay, so they drew that. So they've got another land in place. So they are going to be able to reflect a mage next turn. 
So I thought it might, I guess they can't take my Inquisition, that would be super bad. So they took my Inquisition, then I just push Inquisition. Okay. So I think my number one goal is getting this Reflector Mage out of out of my opponent's hand. I just want to keep chugging in with this Grim Flare. And my opponent's going to like freebooter me again. They're probably going to take my Abrupt Decay, but I can still, excuse me, I can still just keep attacking and accruing advantage with this Flare. So yeah, I think I'm just going to attack with Grim Flare to start. I knew about that one. I didn't know about this one. So I know they have another freebooter. All right, Street Wraith, Death Shadow, Breeding Pool. So I kind of want all three of these. I could draw them all next turn so that I could like cycle industry where I play Tarmogoyf Death Shadow. Because even if they reflect or mage me, that's not that bad. I don't think I want Street Wraith. I don't think we're going to be looking to deal ourselves that much damage. Wow, this is tough. So I can now, like, Abrupt Decay something, and then next turn go, like, Tarmogoyf, Inquisition, and Double Spell, and just let them reflect their mage that. Yeah, I think that's what I want to do. Just be efficient next turn. we got to hit him with this Grim Flare, so... We want to go land, we want to go like Street Wraith, land, Death Shadow. Because like this team or battle rage is going to present like an, a problem for our opponent. So let's go. This is tough. I think I want to go, I want to keep all these so that I have a really efficient turn next turn. And then I can play Death Shadow and have interaction up. So I want to go Death Shadow, Breeding Pool, Street Wraith. And now I think I'm just going to Abrupt Decay something instead of... Or I can play Tarmogoyf, and then if they Freebooter me... Yeah, I'm going to play Tarmogoyf, and then I can hold up a 3-mana turn next turn. But now we're just, like, getting on the board. And if my opponent Reflector Mages me, then we still have, like, the dominant board presence. So there's Mana Confluence. Because, like, next turn, my opponent can go, like, Meddling Mage this turn. Okay, there's the Vile. So we know their hand. They've got a Freebooter here. And they're going to cast a Freebooter. And then we Inquisition something. And we can even, like, cast Team or Battle Rage if we want. So my opponent's got no interest in blocking. So... So now I just get in there and I can, uh, like, use this cycle with this Street Wraith if I find, like, a piece of one-man interaction. I think I'm gonna cycle this before damage. Cause it's gonna turn, it's gonna pump everything. And we'll just 
just let this damage resolve. Yeah, this is tough. Like, this has been a weird, a very weird match. Because now they're going to, like... I definitely need to use my mana next turn. And I'm probably just taking Reflector Mage. I don't think we're gonna have time for this. And I don't think we're gonna wanna pay life for this Street Wraith. But I do think we want this Death Shadow. And I'm just going to take this Reflector Mage. And then play this tapped. And then we're still going to beat our opponent over the head. This Grim Flare. I don't know if I played this right. Like, I've played kind of passive, which is like allowed my opponent. Yeah, bend the things on a shadow. And the shadow is going to, like, punish our opponent for racing. And now they mage the battle rage, but now they go mage. Okay, so now they can play, but like we're still we're still beating, we're still racing very well here. And now they basically can never block with these because if they block with either of these. I kill this rage, and then they have now they have to block one of my creatures next turn. They took a goyf, okay. That's annoying. And then we don't attack. Well, do we attack? I mean, these just bounce. It doesn't do anything and it my opponent wants to make this trade, then whatever. The thing is, I can attack with my Death Shadow next turn if my opponent attacks me. Don't be a Thalia's Lieutenant. Okay, Champions. Champion's scary, but Champion's beatable. So if we draw a removal spell here, we're pretty much off to the races. But we've only got a dismember and two fatal pushes left in our deck. It's difficult for my, my opponent can't attack. That's a big draw. So if I attack with everything, I can push this meddling mage in combat and then team her battle rage over to give myself like a really good combat. We, just, we, we had two pushes, let's be real. We had two fatal pushes. So I think I attack with everything and then I see how my opponent blocks and then I push and then rage over to deal like the mo not to deal the most damage, but to blow up blocks the least. Yeah, I don't think there's. I think I just send it with everything, and then I just use this team or battle rage as like limited combat trick, and we just like wreck his board as much as possible. Because like, and I think we let this thing block. Or do we let, I guess we, yeah, we're gonna let this thing block. Yeah, we, we were definitely attacking. I'm just making sure that I'm attacking in the right way. Yeah. Let's make sure we don't tap our red source. And then we just rage the Grim Flare. 
and we kill them. So that game, even though like, when in doubt, man, rage it out. Better lucky than good. So we don't want denial. And I really don't like Veil vale on the draw. I like this last hope because if I can control their anthems, then we're good. And I kind of like these as well because I think they're just better than these cards here. And then I could also just cut like a thought seize and then bring in a hostage taker because it can just kind of like mess with battle. I think I think hostage taker is fine because they're not going to be killing the hostage taker, and it's just another removal spell, a targeted removal spell, which I'm a pretty big fan of. I wonder if Veil is better than like another Thoughtseize. Like I might want one more of these. You like Thoughtseize is over Liliana's? I guess kind of breaking up synergy is pretty good. I want I definitely kinda of wanna make room for these Liliana's when I'm on the play though. 43 viewers, thanks everyone for showing up. I appreciate all the support. If you guys uh, like what you see, please hit the follow button. And if uh, you guys want to catch up on some of my streams, then you can check my YouTube page, which is linked below. I'm almost, I think I'm almost 60% of the way to getting monetized. Yeah, that makes sense. I've really been like thoroughly impressed with this hostage taker. Okay. So this is a pretty good hand. It's a hand that I've got to prioritize to leverage this Kozilek's return. Like I want to take out Anthemers. So I am going to keep this. The hand is great if this Kozilek's return is great. Noble Hierarch. Okay, so we're 100% fetching. We're going to get Overgrown Tomb with our first land. <laughs> well, we didn't cast three drops against Affinity, which killed us. Hey, there we go. Goodbye, Gooch has followed. Nice name. They have a dismember on top. Okay. So I guess I just take the second freebooter because they're going to freebooter either this or this. And then I can then deal with the freebooter and then cast this or this. Yeah, awesome name. Okay. Now I get to take out the reflector mage, or the meddling mage. So now my opponent's kind of pinned here a little bit. Yeah, it is, it's annoying to say the least. So we can't, we have to, we have to take out this meddling mage. I 
I think we're just gonna take out Meddling Mage and then take out um, Reflector Mage. So let's get rid of Meddling Mage, and then we'll just take we'll we'll take the two for one. So Goyf, Goyf is currently one, two, three, four. So the instant would make Goyf a five six. So Dismember doesn't have text at the moment. I hope I played the right land. I wasn't really thinking about that. We're just gonna get a basic. Protect our life total, and then just get rid of Reflector Mage, and then the whole plan is to Kozilek's return. Our opponent's board. I hope I played the right land. I wasn't necessarily, I wasn't super paying attention there. If I didn't play the right land, I was meaning to. All right, so we come in for, the, that's okay. So we're gonna go to seven, and we can return this. So I guess I'm gonna upkeep it. Yeah, this line is gonna struggle against that, but I guess I'll upkeep this Kozilek's return. And then next turn I can go Abrupt Decay and Tarmogoyf. Pew. Pew, pew. Pew, pew. I like my cards. Yeah. Ooh. Now we're gonna traverse for Death Shadow, play Death Shadow, and then hold up Abrupt Decay. Ooh. Ooh, I could get my Staticaster. Staticaster seems like a house on like this board and what the board could be because my opponent is uh, going to be playing a lot of X ones because they don't have Anthems. So it's like, do I get a Death Shadow or do I just like give him the business? And I think the adult play is to get a Death Shadow. And then the static has to lead to dismember. You're right. Like, like the child inside me wants to get this as a static caster, but there like comes a time when you must do the right thing. And this way, we also get to play around a freebooter better. I know, I know, I just wanted to do it. I just wanted to let the child in me go. Like sometimes you just want to do the wrong thing because it's cool. Oh, Archmage, you're here. You're here a lot. We'll, we'll hook you up here. Because I wanted, in case my opponent played like a Kite Sail Freebooter, I wanted to use my cards here. Like I didn't want to like, I wanted to use, like I just didn't want to get Freebooted out of the game. Because like I'm so far ahead, I think the only, some of the only ways I lose is if I don't get to cast my spells. And I just want to cast my Decay if I need to. I want to cast my, um... I want to cast my Decay. I want to... Uh, I just don't want to get caught in my hand. Phantom 4, I don't think that that's what I should have done there. Like, at that point, now that we don't have a Freebooter and I can get it out of my hand, I think I just want to clear the board and I just want to start clocking as soon as possible. Yeah, I was playing conservative because I was head I was ahead far enough. You know. Okay, so I'm actually gonna restart Moto here. So I'll put this up here on a restart Moto. 
Up there is my, I'm sponsored by uh, Gamer Craze, which is a store in upstate New York. So if any of you are from upstate New York, you should be checking that place out. It's a great store. They sell video games, paintballing, and magic stuff. Um, this stream is sponsored by Card Hoarder as well. So if you guys need any magic online singles, Card Hoarder is the best bot chain around because of what they do for the community as well. And if you guys ever want to see parts of my stream that you missed, you can check out my YouTube channel, which is linked below. And um, again, if you guys want to contact me, I love talking magic on Twitter. I love talking about magic and beer, pretty much. And then the little annoying parts of my life. So, so yeah, that's, that's where I'm at. I'm waiting for this thing to pop here. My wife helped me with my sponsor page. So she's in marketing and she's good at this kind of stuff. Come on, Moto. I, I really haven't looked at it a lot yet, Archmage. There, there, was, one, there was one white card that I'm kind of interested in. There was a white card that said, like, exile target creature with life that's larger. Like, the exile target creature that is larger than your life total. So I, I was pretty excited about that card, to tell you the truth. So... Moto is loading. So let's switch it back here to the stream. Let's move over to our play lobby. I don't remember what it was called. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, like I was, I'm slightly excited about that card. I don't know if it's like genuinely good or not, but like the fact that for one mana I can kill Worm Coil Engine without giving them a land is kind of sweet. Let me see. We'll do this while Moto's loading. Blazing Hope. I'm gonna link it in the chat. Like, I ultimately think that it will probably not be good enough, but one can at least hope. Like, it's just really not good, the fact that you can't, um, like, the fact that you can't bolt the bird is always kind of bad. But it is nice that it exiles. M MVPD98. I think that demonic tutors are just too slow. Or not demonic tutors. Whatever that tutor. Diabolic tutors. Diabolic tutors are always too slow. Even if you can get something from outside the game. Yeah. Bishop of... When Bishop enters the battlefield, exile target creature and opponent controls until Bishop of the Binding leaves the battlefield. Whenever Bishop of the Binding attacks, target vampire gets plus X plus X, where X is the power. So the problem with this is, with the Death and Taxes deck, is why are you not just playing Fiend Hunter? You know? like traverse it is kind of it's tutor that's if you have vampires though right let me dem am i reading this right archmage let me see let me see if i'm reading this card right when it says whenever blinding bishop attacks it gets plus x plus x to where x is a, oh oh i thought it was x was vampires so if you if you hit like oh okay that's interesting, because if you hit, like, a Death Shadow, then this thing becomes a 14-14, regardless of your life total. Right? Am I, am I going nuts here? Is that how that works? Oh, right there. 
it's right here. So, Rubbish Attacks, Target Vampire gets, yeah, it gets itself. Okay, so that is more interesting now. Okay, so back to the game. This hand's good. We'll keep it. We'll just hope we're not playing against Burn. Opponent Mulligans to five. Things that excite me. Okay, so considering like our opponent has double Mulligan, I think I'm just gonna like, I'm not gonna cycle these street rates yet because, because I just don't want to get got if my opponent's playing burn, and this is a hand where I easily could get got because I don't have a Death Shadow. Okay, it's Affinity, which is still kind of annoying. So one, two, three. I could take Opal, Decay, this, or I could just leave. I might as well make my Thought Seize, because my, my discard's not very good. I'm going to make my discard trade. So let's take this Opal. We could set up a position, like, it's pretty mopey to do this, but like my discards are not very good, so I'm gonna make a, a real effort to just have my cards trade. And now we are going to cycle these. And again, I'm not gonna fetch shot. So let's go one more time to find, all right, so let's check out our top card. Yeah, I just want, because, I mean, my opponent would have gotten Metalcraft, and with how this game's going, they're probably going to be out of cards before I have a chance to cast the second Thought Seize. So I just didn't want them to, like, top deck something. Uh, Paulo the Doro, thank you very much for the follow. I didn't want them to top deck something that could, uh, how do I say this? I didn't want them to top deck into an explosive start. I just wanted my cards to trade. So, like, next turn, I really want to just Thought Seize this turn because I want, unless my opponent's top card, I'm actually gonna see what my opponent's top card is. Blink Moth Nexus, all right, I think I'm just gonna take, I think I'm just gonna play Tarmal Wave. And I'm gonna fetch a basic. Okay. Because my original line was gonna be like, Thoughtseize the thing that, makes them explosive and then um they don't play the yes but like i would have had another chance to deal with that if i would have um uh, like let's say let's say that i i would have had a, like a better chance to do that without the opal Making one for one with affinity doesn't seem really right. I think that it doesn't mega, but like, it doesn't mega, but like when they mold a five, that's all I want to do. I would not have done that play had we been playing against a full, a fully set affinity deck. Decay this. Slaughter the strong. Each player chooses any number of creatures he or she controls with total power four or less and sacrifices all other creatures. Total power four or less. So you can keep like Mom, Stoneforge Mystic, Thalia, and then sacrifice the rest of them, right? All right, so opponent just packs it in. I don't know why I like DNT so much right now. It's kind of cool, for sure. So we're going to sideboard similarly to how we did in the last match up against this deck. And I'd like to just, like, I wouldn't, and I know that play looks pretty odd from what I did earlier, 
I'm gonna bring in a brutality. I don't like. I don't think. I think this hostage taker's nonsense in this matchup. The play like it was pretty odd. It just seems slow. Like, do you think that? I guess it just gives me another way to remove a creature, and they're not gonna kill it. All right, we're gonna try it for science. Because it can like target artifact. It can even hit dark steel citadel. I can get like I can actually like no one in the history of magic has ever dealt with a dark steel citadel, and I could be the first one to do it. We have the seven spell here. Um, so I like hostage taker right now. This sucks. I think I've got to keep this, but like this isn't great. I like hostage taker right now because I don't think ranger is like ranger's not as good in fair matchups when your opponents are playing like damnation, maelstrom pulse, and supreme verdict, which is like I think there's less Grixis shadow than there used to be. Yes. All right, so there we go with the old uh, cranial plating. So let's just play this tap. We're going to lose this game here. I guess I could have traversed for a swamp, but, like, this game is over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, one, two, four, six, eight, eight. Shock, 17, eight is nine. Yeah, I can't even like rip. I have to rip exactly, yeah, we're dead. So like, I like the hostage. Power freeze, yeah. So I like, basically I like hostage taker right now because I don't like ranger as much because it's slow and like ranger is the nut in death shadow mirrors, but there are less death shadow mirrors in modern right now. We're gonna play concession, Mox Opal. I guess that was the line, but um, and I like what I like about Hostage Taker is that Hostage Taker can like deal with an ensnaring bridge, and Hostage Taker can deal with like a worm coil engine, which my deck's gonna struggle with a lot. And it's just like it's a good fair card, like. It's gonna remove a creature, and um, it's oh, it's gonna remove a creature, and it's going to like cast a creature, which is a two for one. And then if the hostage taker ever eats a removal spell, then it's gonna be a, another two for one. I have tried Hazret. Hazret's also so like. Let me go back here. Let me get back here. So I'm going to an IQ tomorrow. I have tried Kologon's Command. I just don't think Kologon's Command is where you want to be with these decks. Like, I think Kologon's Command is sick in Grixis Shadow because, like, you recur. Moto's tweaking out. So let's go like this. So, Kologon's Command is just not what you want in the Death Shadow decks, I think, because like, you're just not looking to play a long game like that. And Kologon's Command leans itself to a long play. And it doesn't really kill, like the only card that is really, the only deck that is really good against, in my opinion, is Affinity. The rest of that in this deck, it's like pretty much straight average against every other deck. If you're returning Snapcaster Mage, then it becomes sick. That's when it becomes, like, awesome. Because then your Kologon's Command turns into a removal spell. But, like, with this deck, if you're traversing... Let me just make sure my match isn't popped. It has. If you're traversing for, like... 
or if your Colodon's commanding a Death Shadow, that takes a while. That's like a, that's probably a three turn setup because you're not going to have four mana a lot in the early in a in most games. Um, so I'm thinking if one, I'm wondering if like what this should be. I don't know. I want this to be like this is like my Hazret Ranger Vios, Liliana the Last Hope, like my grindy card. And what I like about this is I can this is better in non grindy matchups. So yeah, that'd be nice. I would like to play first. So we've got Delirium, but I need to be pretty worried about my. We don't. I guess we don't have Delirium. Oh, wait, yeah. What am I saying? We do have Delirium. I'm gonna have to be a little cautious in my life total, though. So I will keep this. So do I just go to 15? So if I get. Um, you can't mulligan this hand. So I think what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna get Overgrown Tomb. The problem with that is that doesn't get me closer to casting all five of my colors. Let's cycle this beforehand to see if we hit a land so that I can determine, because there's Tarmogoyf. So if I get Blood Crypt, Breeding Pool, Godless Shrine, I'm all good. Let's get Blood Crypt. And then after that, we are, we're slowing down. Rip. This is a pretty good hand from our opponent. I wonder if I just, now, because if I just, if I take the Springly Jump, it's so, I'm running now with the Budokov, John White. Yep. But this is good. You're just playing. You're playing Death Shadows, so like you can't really go wrong. I think I gotta take Rest in Peace because this checks this. Take the drum and hope. I, th I don't think I can do that. I think this might be too slow in this game. So what I think I'm going to do is take Rest in Peace. Yeah, I'm going to take Rest in Peace. I'm too... 4 deck is really good. I don't know what the 4-0 means there, my friend. Okay, so the Gal we can't play Death Shadow because Gal Blast just eats it. Oh, this doesn't get Breeding Pool. Oh, I cycle I sequence my lands poorly. So now we're gonna be conservative with our life total. Unless we like draw a team about so we need to choose like is this gonna be a game where we go pedal to the metal? Okay, so here comes a Ravager or an Overseer. There's Steel Overseer. Okay, so now we're going Pedal of the Metal. Dismember this, go to 8, play Death Shadow. Death Shadow's a 5-5, five, five, 16. Traverse next turn for a fetch land. We're at 5. Death Shadow's 8. Teamer Battle Rage and Tarma Life. Oh, they're actually at 15. Oh, I heard my wife cough. I'm going to go check on, check on my wife after this round, see how she's doing. Probably go bring her some coffee. She likes that when I bring her coffee. We actually can kill our opponent. Yeah. Okay, so fetch land, 16, they have to block Tarmogoyf, and yeah, I think my opponent's just dead six ways to Sunday, because they can't cast double, they can't cast double um, 
Gal Blast. So we just traverse. I don't think they stood a chance if we took Drum. Drum just feels so medium. And I mean, like, I get it, but I think with how our hand was, I don't know. So it doesn't really matter what we get, right? We go to five. I guess we're gonna go to five. And then we rage. What do I want in play in case this goes wrong? I guess I want well, I guess I want a blue source so that any land can make it so that I cast hostage taker. I actually got a white source. Because then I can cast lingering souls without taking any more damage. So my opponent's got a block. Basically I've got 16. I've 22 points of damage coming at my opponent, and they need to put 8 power in front of something. One, two, yeah. Dude, that's, that should be like the motto of this stream. I'll blast me. Pump my death shadow. All right, I'm gonna. Well, hang on, because I want to make sure I win this game. Okay, I'm gonna put my sponsor page up. Go bring my wife some coffee, and then I'll be back for the last match. Yes, I guess if Dispatch would have been their last one. Love you. All right. Potential three, yeah. Do you wanna know what is like the most crushing thing like ever on Magic Online is when you start O2 and when you start out O2 and then you like battle back for two matches and then you lose the last one. That's just the worst. Like, it just, that just kills me every time. It just makes me want to like contemplate why I play this game. Cause it's like, it's like a solid, those three matches is probably like an hour and a half of your life. 
Like, it's just, it's quite, it's quite sad. Especially the way we lost the first two. I think there's a lot of cool cards in this set. I think that, like, there might be some cards that get back into modern, too. Like, I don't know if the blue-green Merfolk deck is better than the mono-colored Merfolk deck is, but it is nice that with the blue-green Merfolk, they got another two Mana Lords. Now they have, I think they have 12 two Mana Lords now. So that with, all right, so we're, we're back into it here. Let's. Um, with 12 two mana lords, there's definitely a chance that like, um, gosh, what was I going to say? With 12 two mana lords, like, that's really consistent. And I like the Kumena speaker. I don't think I would cut the curse catchers. I think I would just play like super low to the ground version of it. Like I would play eight, eight one drops, 16 two drops, and like Miro Regery. I don't think I'd play Master Waves. This hand is three quarters of the way to Delirium, and we get a redraw, and our opponent's mulliganed. So I'm going to keep this. I would not keep this, I don't think, if my opponent kept seven. I just really like thought seizing. Like, oh man. Oh man. So now we need a Death Shadow. Oh, this hand is really bad. We draw another thought seize. All right, so now we're going to go get. We're gonna bobble them, go get basic. Use Bloodstained My Arcs, it's the worst land in our deck. They're drawing, they're drawing a, uh, whatever it is, a land. Yep, just take this. Oh, we do another, if we draw, if we find a blood, if we find a Death Shadow, we're good. Well, Goblin Guy hooking us up. Come on. Something. Okay. So there's our homeboy. So now I've actually got to, like, Thought Seize my opponent. And Shock to get this Death Shadow into play. Because I don't want them to just... So Thought Seize, 8, 3, 2 turn clock. Take an eight, so it's five. Like five from this, three from this. So yeah, we just thought sees. Play ourselves a five five shadow. And then like hopefully we rip team or battle rage and our opponent doesn't do anything next turn. That would be sweet. I'm a big fan of our opponent doing nothing all the time. I would be thoroughly surprised if we won this game. Okay, so there's a Lava Man and an Arid Mesa. That was pretty decent. So attack. Yeah, so definitely attacking with this Death Shadow. And then I'm playing another Death Shadow, and I'm playing this land tapped. Because this means it's like, I mean, we die, we die to like any three mana removal spell, or three mana damage spell, because like, they just go like, bing, bing. But let's just hope. They're playing at the speed that would suggest that's not what they have. So now we're going to play this fetch land and attack with both shadows.
Rut Row. Opponent upkeeps it, which is a fantastic play. It's because Burn is stone average, I think. But we're toe two, so we're currently stone average. So are we going to win two games? One game on the draw after sideboard against Burn is going to be difficult. But then again, like modern is stone average. I have 13, 13 shadows. I like to keep in some number of Street Wraith just to make sure that I have Delirium. I've even contemplated sometimes bringing this Hostage Taker in. I cut some Street Wraiths, but like you kind of need Street Wraith to make sure like deck operation works. Like you, you want to see. I think you want to see one street wraith in some games. You don't ever want to see two, and you don't even want to see one in every game. So like three is kind of like you want to see one every game. All right, this hand is pretty good. So we're gonna go. It is. Our opponent's mulliganing, and we're going to have two discard spells. Hopefully we just rip a natural land. Now there is merit to fetching Breeding Pool and then just traversing, but I think it's just like such high upside if we don't, and then we can even trade spells again next turn. They kept on top, so they mulled a five. Jeez. There, go to the nice little Twitch alert. Jess Guy Charming, <laughs> nice. Thank you very much for the follow. So, they kept on top. I would assume it's a creature or a burn spell. And I really don't want to have to fight through two creatures. Especially considering like, then like this Chain of the Rocks is pretty annoying. But the Tarmogoyf is just going to brick wall these creatures. I think I'm going to take Chain of the Rocks because it makes Goyf huge. And it's the only answer our opponent currently has to Tarmogoyf. And I think that we're going to be able to... Um, I think that we're going to be able to get rid of this... Um, stub this Boros Charm. So we get our basic... We just take the one that casts more mana. That's effectively a five damage spell because of the Swift Spear. Suspend Rift Bolt. Assuming opponent plays this land. Yep. All right, let's get our homeboy in play. And I am going to block this. Monastery Swift Spear, even if, even if uh, it means that they kill our Tarmer Goyf. It's going to kind of suck if they use two burn spells to get rid of this Goyf, but like, I guess that could be worse. Ten, going upstairs. Block. Okay. So I don't know any of the two cards left in my opponent's hand. I probably have to attack with Goyf and play Grimflare. And then like chump the Swift Spear with Grimflare. Alternatively, I could Thought Inquisition to get the spells. Because like my opponent could have like Deflecting Palm, they could have double three mana spell. My opponent didn't play a land, so they have two spells. The odds are, I think, that they're two, two mana spells, so I'm going to trade with one of them. OK. 
Okay, it's a land. So we're punished. So I attack for four. They crack me back for one, assuming they don't draw anything. Then we're dead to two draws. As opposed, I can make it three draws. Yeah, we're gonna just pass. There's the vantage. So I'd like to draw a breeding pool. So now I think I just play attack with Tarmor with Playground Player. Yeah. Don't palm me, bro. And I'm 100% blocking with this Grim Flare. Jeez. All right, first verse, same as the. I'm going to go again. I'd like to see what I kept in this game. I guess I could have gone Breeding Pool Traverse for Swap, and then we would probably comfortably win this game. And we block. That's savage. That is just... That's so painful. Oh. Oh. All right. That's just so, that's so painful. All right, I'm gonna jump back in for one more. Wow, man, Moto is just tweaking today. All right, we're gonna do one more here. I don't think I gotta change anything. I think I just got kind of like struggled a little bit. Like we lost two really close matches to Affinity and Tron to start the day. So 58 viewers everybody, thanks for hanging out. I appreciate all of your support and I hope everyone's having a good day. What do you guys think will Oh, playing against the trophy leader. I beat this guy the last time we played. So we know they're playing a really grindy deck with Blood Moon. We have our basic swamp. As weird as this sounds, I'm going to keep this. I would not keep this in the dark, but I'm going to keep this because I know what they're doing. I just don't want a mulligan, be up a card, and then if my opponent wants to cast this, Like, I would not keep this hand normally, but I just know that they're playing the Mardu Pyromancer deck. Okay. In before they're on UW. Man, if he was playing blue-white, that would suck. So we're going to upkeep both of these because there's a good chance they have discard spells. Our hand's very threat threat dense, which is pretty good. It's 
right where we want to be. I've seen more burn on Moto lately. It's probably because of the big mana decks. I'm gonna go, hang on one second. I'm just talking about uh, Archmage. I didn't want them to top deck a a way to a discard spell and then be able to uh, mess with our like look at our hand. Yeah, this young PZ is gonna be a huge problem. They have a thought seize, okay. Alright, two bobbles. Land. Inquisition. Death Shadow. All right, so now we're just gonna go over on Tomb Tarmor. Push did not happen. We are playing the end boss of modern, yes. These pyros are gonna get pretty annoying. We're playing the Moto in Boss of Modern. The War Hand is gas. Like, opponent's already got only has three cards. One of them's basically a blank, fork bolt. And we're gonna be, I think we're gonna be able to beat over this young Pyromancer. Yeah, we do have a lot of stuff going on. So, no chance casting Battle of Revelar anytime soon. So, I'm just gonna get in. With this Goyf. And then we're going to play another Goyf. Then next turn. Yes, he currently is the end boss of Moto. And then next turn, we're going to... Yes. I, I, I don't know. I'm... Like, my... My issue, okay, so now we can go Inquisition, Shockland, Inquisition, Thoughtseize, Polluted Delta. Inquisition, Thoughtseize, Polluted Delta here. So, we also can just threaten a team of Battle Rage. Yeah, get rid of that. 5, 6, 10, 15. So let's attack. Yeah, this guy, this guy plays a lot. I don't think this deck's very good. Like, I don't think it's just inherently powerful. I think this guy just plays it well. So we don't kill him, so there's no sense of going for it. I think this guy just plays it well and plays a lot. Yeah, we're going to take Fork Bolt, and then we're going to cast Death Shadow. Just to put another threat onto the board. It is very similar. It's a very similar to Jund. It's just like how his deck works. His deck just makes Faithless Looting like an ungodly card. It 
And it, it's nice that like his two primary threats are red, like Bedlam Reveler and um, between Bedlam Reveler and whatever it is, um, Young Pyromancer. So even if our opponent like Blood Moons, they basically just need Basic Swamp to operate. Because even if they Blood Moon, they can cast all their cards. I think his deck's just inherently worse than like a than like a regular black green deck. So this matchup's kind of hard to sideboard against. I usually ditch the fatal pushes because they only hit pyro, and I, then I just like lean my deck to discard pyro. I like brutality because that comes in and also can deal with pyro and gain life. I try not to get burned out in this matchup. And that's a way that I commonly lose this. Yeah, I'm gonna cut some number of veils for sure. I'll bring look to bring the veils back in on the play, which means I'll probably go like this and this, and then cut one, cut two of these, and leave one in my deck because it's like a miser's one is just like super powerful. Like there can be situations where, like if we have a lingering soul stall out and you find a veil, like it's great. If we have a, um, like if there's a, if our opponent Bedlam Revelers and we find like a Liliana who doesn't have anything else to do, then it's great. So I'll definitely look to bring more in on the draw. I like to have stubs just because I know that our opponent's gonna have Blood Moon. Like I usually hate Stubborn Denial in all fair matchups, but you just gotta respect Blood Moon. That's why I don't, even though this is a little grindy and sometimes I like to shave a discard spell or two against grindy decks, I just want them in this because it's just, the game just revolves around Blood Moon. And Hostage Taker, it's just, it's just a removal spell for, um, Bedlam Reveler. So this hand's not very good, but again, I just don't want a mulligan against these fair decks, and Grim Flare is very good against his deck. So I will keep this. And again, this is like not a very good keep, but it's it's ultimately a resource-based matchup, and I just don't want to mulligan in resource-based matchups. So I assume they take Grim Flare. They might take Tarmogoyf if they've got, yeah. So that means they have like a lightning bolt. That was a gross draw. So this probably gets breeding. No, probably gets overgrown. No, it's, it's gonna get breeding pool. Four shizzle. Bend them revel lingering souls combo deck. And then we're gonna get a basic. Well, now we're gonna thought seize. Now we're gonna inquisition our opponent. Um, because they they probably have this deck has a lot of removal spells in it, and I don't want to have battle rage against removal spells. So they were gonna be able to kill our duder. I guess I'll still just take Burst Lightning. It kind of feels bad taking, well, one, two, three. So this costs four at the moment. Or this costs five at the moment. This makes it four. With copious amounts of Planeswalkers. Oh, there's another Twitch alert. The Chin 31, nice name. Thank you very much for the follow. I appreciate it. Yeah, I think I'm gonna take looting as like mopey as this feels. But maybe I can like if my opponent spends their entire turn reveling next turn, then I can deal with that. I think I just wanna play take burst lightning to set up Grim Flare.
Because now, my I, like my opponent can go looting into, yeah. And that takes away, like directly takes away from there. No duder. Ooh, that's gas. <laughs> play. And I'm going to play this tapped. I'm going to play this untapped. Give him something to think about. Plus, like, we do want to get our death shot. Like, we do want to get down to, like, nine life. Between eight and nine life. Thought, see, that's, that's rough. Because now they definitely take hostage taker. The nice thing is, is that we're looking like we're going to be able to get a shot in. Yeah, we're going to be able to... We're gonna be able to get a shot in with this uh, green flare more than likely, unless our opponent go one, two, three, four, five, six. So here comes the reveler. So our best draw would be like dismember. I think my opponent should attack. Okay, that's not bad. So let's take a look what's going on. Okay, so we're gonna get rid of this. I'm just gonna deal with one Lingering Souls token. So we're probably in deep trouble here, but if they deal with my Liliana, then we get Delirium. There's the foothills. Okay. They bolt this to get a prowess trigger. Double bolts kills me on the dot. Sad. We probably weren't winning that game. God, Moto is like all over the place today. I've restarted it like three times. I still don't think it's right to block there. Like if my opponent top decks lightning bolt, they top deck lightning bolt. And again, we're just going to keep it. I think my problem with Moto is that I have like too many freeform binders, too many freeform decks. I think I've got to keep, because like we have all our mana, I can stub something on turn one, and I have an answer to. Yeah, I know. Then we can traverse for Death Shadow though, and we can like at least put up some type of fight. This hand is colorful. I think I'm going to keep it, and I'm going to hold up. Yeah, this is just like such an easy way to get this. Adam, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna play this the IQ. I just hate mulliganing in these matchups. This this is like I'm willing to think like this could be a hundred percent wrong. I don't think Staticaster looks good in a Lingering Souls matchup when I'm bringing in my own Lingering Souls. I hit no, okay. 
Again, not gonna run my Tarmog Life out to get Lightning Bolted. I really wanna save this Brutality for like a, for um, for uh, whatever, Young Pyro. Okay, so there's my Swamp. Yeah, this is like a Mardu Pyromancer deck. And again, this does this makes so we don't trade. The opponent's gonna be lingering. There's the pyro. So let's ditch the push. And then I, I'm gonna stub a lingering souls if my opponent gives me that option. Alternatively, I can stub a terminate, which might be better. It's gonna take me a lot of draw steps to win this match. That sucks. But if he takes Tarmog Life. So if I stub this and our opponent takes Tarmog Life, then we've got Delirium, which, but this Terminate just eats whatever we go and get. Alternatively, Well, if he takes if he takes the traverse and the way that his hand is lined up, then the Tarmogoyf's gonna live. Alternatively, all my cards trade. I think I need to find a way to maneuver this to trade with a card, and it just doesn't trade now. As unfortunate as that is. So he just takes my threat. That's gonna be a good one at some point. But now he's gonna get his he's gonna get his pyro into play. I think I'm just gonna stub the fun half of this lingering souls. It's gonna give me delirium, and then I'm gonna be able to go. Double, um, double shadow next turn, or like get Tarmogoyf. Yeah, so we're gonna get Tarmogoyf, we're gonna get another green source. So now I can go Traverse for Street Wraith. Then draw another card. I think I like that. And then I'm then I probably still can't play both Death Shadows because of how annoying this uh then this terminates annoying too. I think I'm just gonna get Street Wraith. And hopefully set something up. Alright. That's pretty good. So that's just another threat. So I guess I can just go Death Shadow Terminate. Then the dust settles. My opponent spends their turn trading with two of my cards. And then I have another Death Shadow. They probably go like here, here. Alternatively, they can go like Pyromancer Lightning Bolt, which feels rough. But I gotta start making some headway. What I need is to start ripping Lingering Souls. Okay, so I know my opponent's hand. Two, three, four, five. 
I'm just gonna be mana efficient. So now we got a game. I'm still gonna be behind on the Lingering Souls race. So my opponent can Reveler. Yeah, opponent's hand is very stacked. It's going to be a long game. Need like Grim Flare. That's not bad. Because then we just take. We gotta take Reveler. And I think I just crash. I don't think I went out. I'll trade four for two at this point. I think my opponent should. I guess my opponent can get aggressive because they're gonna start making their own little army. The best draw for me would be another Traverse or a Liliana the Last Hope. Hostage taker is pretty good as well. So I think I'm just going to hostage taker this young pyromancer. And then my opponent needs lightning bolt or terminate. Fatal push doesn't do it. Terminate does it though. God. Forward bowl. Is Hosh Taker your own personal spice? I think it's I think it's a um, tick up, we die. Gross, we need this like a turn ago. I can roll down, get Death Shadow, hit Lingering Souls, and then not cast that as well. Bing, bing. Yeah, I guess I just roll down, hit Lingering Souls, and that's how I win. Exactly. So we just gotta, like, tick this down and hit Lingering Souls. And we didn't hit Lingering Souls. Ugh. And that's probably my fault for not mulligan my additioning hand. I just hate mulliganing hands against like this deck and resource-based matchups. All right, let's jump back in. Hunter viewers, thanks everyone for showing up and hanging out. I appreciate all of your support. I guess while we're waiting for the last match, we'll go here. Uh, this stream is brought to you by Gamer Craze which is a store that I play up in, uh, where I learned to play Magic in upstate New York. They're working on a website, and they have a good selection of all uh, Magic cards. This stream's also brought to you by Card Hoarder. So if you have Magic Online singles, you should head to Card Hoarder to get them. And if you ever want to look at <coughs> archives of the stream, you can look down here where my YouTube channel is. And if you ever want to connect with me to talk, I love talking Magic, you can find me on Twitter, which is also linked below. I would like to play first. Heater. Actual heater. We do want that. Psycho. Yes, the Meg Draft is on my YouTube page, Adam. She did okay. Just in case we're playing against Burn. All right, we're playing against a combo deck. I think I'm just gonna take Jace. Cause Jace is like the one card we can't really answer. Jace is just going to like accrue in incremental advantage. So now I think I'm just going to fetch a Blood Crypt. So 
Spire left canal, so that's what they drew. The old Grixis Gorios. I haven't played this against the Stegolon, so they did Steam Vents, Hollow Fountain. Right on time. So I think I'm going to get just the red. I'm going to forfeit my green spells, and then we should be pretty good. Because this is a three-turn clock. I'm 0-1 with Lajoso. I went 2-3 and last league. It's been a rough stretch today. We had a couple of heartbreakers in the last league. So if my opponent Goriel's Vengeance is this Jace back, I'm just going to push it when they go for it. They ditched the guide. Yeah, I think I'm just going to let this happen. Uh, I lost the Mario Pyromancer deck. So there's an Obzadad, and they ditched a Delta. So they've got Seer Visions and two Unknowns. Okay, so eight. So that cuts a turn off the clock. You have one turn, my friend. I guess I could have hid that information. Kept them thinking about it. That was stupid, because now if they have like a way to counter this, then this Obzidat's gonna kill me. That was stupid. That was just stupid. Gorio's Vengeance targeting Jace. I think we're okay with that. And then when they go to like, when they go to get it, then I'm gonna just push this. I find this play odd. And again, we just we made a mistake here because I saw that my opponent had this opposite at. We're just gonna let this go. We're not countering anything that doesn't kill us. I don't know what else kills me from my opponent, but like this serum visions doesn't matter. So I wonder how this Grixis Gorios deck boards. If they board into like similar to the Esper Gorios deck, if they board into like a grindier package, or if they're just all in on the combo. Which I'm not exactly sure. I'm gonna go like I'm gonna board like they're all in on the combo until I see that they aren't. I think. Now they have flip Jace. But I think we can afford, like, cutting these. And I'm going to keep my Dismember in. It's my one Miser's removal spell that can also, like, because it kills Obzidat, and it also can super power, supercharge my draw. I bought four Goyfs and a second Liliana yesterday to finish this deck. Nice, Lajoso. Like, Lajoso, am I saying that right? That is pretty sweet. I like this deck a lot. Like, I'm a pretty big fan. They have EE and Leyline. Okay. Well, then I'm glad I got the counter spells. I like. Uh, I like the hostage taker. It's nice we gotta ship this. It's nice that it uh, doubles as a card that's pretty good against unfair decks too. We'll keep this. We got a, it's a good interaction. Put this on the bottom. Um, 
I like that it, you know, it's good against uninteractive decks like Lantern. You can take an Ensnaring Bridge and you can take like a Worm Coil Engine or an O-Stone. But I also like that it's good against, uh, it's good in fair matchups. Like you can just steal things. Like I was playing, I was playing a game yesterday where my opponent had a Liliana the Veil and I had a Liliana the Last Hope and I was just like working my opponents. Um, with like I take a creature, uh, I always, I always forget that. I'm so used to playing with the stomping ground that I should always lead with this Bloodstained Mire. Because the Bloodstained Mire just gets one less land in the pl than the others. Um, I just like the Hostage Taker is more flexible, I think. I think Hazret is better than Ranger at the moment, but I definitely, I need to go get some more coffee. I don't think I'd play Ranger. It's either going to be Hazret or um, whatever that dude is. Hostage Taker. So I'm going to get pretty aggressive with these stubs because like without a, without a ferocious laws, Savarna with the trolls. Um, cause like we don't have a ferocious thing. So I'm just going to be pretty liberal with these because also it turns on delirium. I like doing this, especially. This is going to give my opponent, let them draw their top card. They might only have a fetch line. Oh, white. So they might have lingering souls. Took another stub. We. So we're exhausting our resources a little bit. So this Jace is going to be kind of... If my opponent finds a Jace, I might be in a little bit of trouble. Excuse me. Because, like, the Gorios Vendit's Jace loop is going to be a lot of value. Now we've got... I don't know, we've got... I guess we've got 10 draws in our deck that are really good. My opponent doesn't do anything. That's odd. Maybe they're like sitting on a Jace? No. Again, like worst case scenario is a Jace. Fetch a green source, probably a breeding pool. The, the Blood St. Myra doesn't. See, again, that's what I was thinking about earlier. All right, there's our homeboy. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a clock. And it's a two turn clock, two attack phase clock. So, Dorio's Vengeance X. They're just fetching the, to thin their deck out, or they're just trying to get that F6 value. And then we're we're bringing the rage next time. So we're just flooding out a lot. Okay, so how we beat this is we dismember the Jace when it blocks, and then we team our battle rage over the top of it. So let's check out what's on top of my deck. Well, I rage then or I rage now, Adam. He gets less 
information either way. So he's going to block with his Jace, and then we dismember it and rage after blockers are declared. I guess we beat him anyways there anyways, because if he goes with the Jace and he fades the Jace out, then the, we trample over full damage anyways. So I, I wasn't thinking there. Wow. My moto is just tweaking out this morning. Look up all the, check out my two sponsors, my YouTube, remind about the YouTube page while we're waiting here. Get back in. So hopefully we can win the last one. We can get a little profit on our league. Open up the treasure chest for the uh, for all the viewers there. And again, I appreciate everybody. Yes, Jace is somebody. We'll share him on. If I dismember the Jace, he then Gorio's vengeance is the Jace back and can block. So and then the Jace can flip after that. It doesn't matter because of Teamer Battle Rage, which is like what I was zoning out about. But if I dismember Jace, Gigoro's Jace's back blocks, flips, transforms it, and then it's out of the way. Still loses to Teamer Battle Rage because it doesn't soak up any damage. But it was just a little thing that I should have, that I just wasn't thinking about. But I appreciate the sarcasm either way. Moto's loading up here. So I think this is like pretty close. This is probably like 72 out of the 75 that I'll play. Oh, we're just crashing because we don't have open league. All right, now we're getting good. So let's jump back into this. League's going, we're back into it. I need to like take a day and just clean out my moto. Clean out all my extra deck lists and all that stuff. like to lead off. This hand's good. This hand's very good. We have three discard spells and a threat. That if this Grim Flare is unanswered. Blue White Control. Thank you very much, Lajasso. I appreciate that. And I'm glad that you're doing well. I kind of want, like, I want to branch out a little more. I guess I want to get Blood Crypt. Blood Crypt, green, green, black. Okay. I want to branch out more into other decks. It's just a bit difficult with my, like, working time frame. Like, all right, so we're playing a good old, good old mirror. My opponent's hand is garbage. I think I just take their discard spell. Then hopefully they don't find another discard spell. And watching on YouTube is the second best way to support me there. So, so I appreciate that. 
Gotta be fine with a discard spell. So he either found a push, and if he did, I'm just gonna like not get my Grim Flare push because it's all I got going on right now. God, he goaded me. So all these cards do the same thing. So I'm just gonna go. Now I'm gonna just, oh, I should have. Now nah, I'm gonna do this anyways. Is that a fat joke? Are you making fat jokes at me now, Archmage? I'm gonna take his stub and then I'm gonna bobble in their upkeep. My opponent punked me out with the Inquisition, with this untap here. I make you a mod, then you just start doing all this to me. Oh, this is going to be really bad. I would like to draw a stub and denial of my own. They went top, bottom. It's fair. Or if I could draw another threat, a second threat would be good. Okay. And I can actually disguise my stub with my fetch land. Fat jokes are not trolling. I exist specifically. I mean, everybody's got to be good at something, right? What is this? So I know all their cards. So they're just cantripping here. Opt, sure. Just give me a hit with my Grim Flare. All right, this is good. As long as my opponent doesn't find a delve card. Because they put a card on top. Oh, they found a delve card. So now I need, like, Team or Battle Rage. Or Liliana the Veil. Or Dismember. Not a polluted delta. That's gross. We're going to take a hit here. That just like ends the game if our opponent's got anything after this. So I think I should stub this. Because if my opponent's last card is another delve card, then I just I can't deal with my opponent playing something else this turn. So I think I've got to stub this. If my opponent adds to the board, see so yeah, now they just let it happen, which means they either have another stub or they've got another threat. Um, I think you want Terminate if you think that you're going to play a lot of Grixis Shadow. That's when I tend to lean on Terminate more. Yeah, that was frustrating. There it is. There it is. Etron shirt. Yep, Eldrazi Tron is is a problem. The way that I've got this deck built, it's a bit worse to Grixis because Grim Flare is not super great in this matchup because it just gets brick walled. Uh, 
Uh, Nico Seven, you should uh, you should link it. Then I'll check it out. Bad caster mage is a side. Oh, it's the two one red guy. I would like to lead off. Sounds very good. Yeah, the third lily is like very much something that I, I just I just like to have. It's the red snapcaster. So let's get this. I'm gonna bob all my opponent's turn. I'd like to protect this Liliana. We're gonna take their Liliana. Potent's pretty good, pretty soft to Veil. Hopefully this isn't a discard spell. Nice. Oh, they just F6 through their turn. Okay. That sucks. That sucks for the opponent. Yeah, I like I like Liliana a lot, and I think it's I think it's the best like it's the best card in the Shadow Mirrors. It's the best card against the Generate decks. Well, it's not the best card. It's like so. Why I like Liliana so much is that you have this same problem. Okay, you have a problem whenever you play any kind of uh, Thought Seize. Yeah, we'll keep that. So that's gonna let us play Death Shadow. The best draw here would be Thoughtseize into Fetchland. But, um, like, what, why Liliana is so good is because all of these decks, all these black green mid range decks, whether you're Shadow, Jund, or anything, you have the problem where you have the wrong half of your deck problem. And Liliana, that's a pretty good draw. So let's go here. And Liliana helps you take the push. And Liliana's there. Let me get Godless Shrine just to have this. Um, and what Liliana is good it does, it lets you trade your bad cards for cards from your opponent. Like if I'm playing against Ad Nauseam and I draw a bunch of Fatal Pushes, Liliana allows me to turn those Fatal Pushes into trading resources from my opponent. And that's why I like it so much. Tribal Zoo is the five color version of this deck, right? So there's the Delta Serum Visions. That's pretty good. So I think, what do I do with this? What do I do with this? I can traverse for a fetch land, which I kind of like. Because I really don't want my K command, my, my Death Shadow to get K commanded. Alternatively, I can traverse for a Street Wraith, which just gets me another card, which I think is what I'm going to do. I don't have a sideboard guide, Lajasso. I tend to think like sideboard guides are a little weird because I don't know what you're playing against. I don't really want to get Goyf at him because that seems pretty slow. I think I want to go get a Shadow. Depends on what my opponent... No, I think I want to get Street Wraith because it makes it so that neither of my cards get K-commanded. This Dismember is going to make it so that I can get my Death Shadows where I need them to be. Excuse me. And I just want to keep up on card, card equity. I do think I want to fetch. There's an argument for leaving that fetch land. If my opponent has a push, they should do this now. There's an argument for leaving that fetch land 
in my hand because of this K command, but they're not doing anything with their K command. Four Thought Scours, that's tight. If I hit a Fatal Push, that's even tighter. Here is my shadow. My death shadow is huge. It's the biggest shadow. And now we can dismember, like we can we can deal with the delve threat, and we can deal. Yeah, I don't really see what gets my opponent out of this. They would need like shadow shadow stub, I think is how they do it. But even shadow shadow stub, or shadow shadow removal spell. But to have shadow shadow removal spell, they would need shadow shadow black source removal spell. Had a very powerful draw there. And our opponent F6 through their second turn, which is always sweet. I'm gonna bring in another discard spell in the draw. It was kind of cool that when I was thinking about what I wanted to do for that Street Wraith, I was like, do I get a land or do I get a Street Wraith? And I Street Wraith into a land, which was pretty sweet. Hundred nine viewers, thank you all for showing up and hanging out. I appreciate all of your support. I appreciate you all being here. If you guys like what you see, please hit the follow button, as it's the best way to kind of grow the channel and get other people looking at stuff, other people checking out my content. All right, we're gonna keep this hand. It's not great because we could easily get stuck on lands, but you can't mulligan this hand. And like, we've got two discard spells, a threat, one of our better cards, and a bottle. Um, in Cure, in Cure All 432, thank you very much for the follow. Tough choice from our opponent. If I were them, that's I don't like taking that card, but it could be that our hand is just like super redundant anyways. So I'm actually gonna over, I'm gonna bobble them in their upkeep. Lawrence backwards. Huh, it is Lawrence backwards. I wonder if that was part of the game plan. Um, Grim Flare is really good if you inspect you expect there to not be not a lot of fatal push decks and not a lot of mid-range decks because like you have to connect with it for it to do anything it's really good against combo decks okay so we take tasker and then we take snapcaster so we don't need our opponent taz daddy in us they have a foil shadow that's hot That is pretty cool. Okay, another shadow. It's a pretty explosive draw from our opponent. Okay, so we're gonna be able to get a shadow into play. I could put two death shadows into play. which I think I like doing. Just gonna be more aggressive, and then we can Thought Seize next turn to pump the shadows. And they don't really have anything great to Thought Seize back from their side, and that would be their entire turn if they went Snap Thought Seize, which I'm pretty okay with. I think you want, yeah, Grim Flare, again, it's great against combo decks. It just enables your deck, smooths things out, it's a little worse in these mid-range matchups. Like than having just probably another removal spell in my opinion. Telperio, thank you very much. Appreciate the support there. Punk's tanking. So alternatively, 
I could take their removal spell. I think it's just safer to thought seize them. Now that I think about it, because like, if they have like, let's just say they go removal spell into land, Snapcaster Mage, then I just like can't win. Always in for shadow contact. Nice. And four push. You totally could do that. Like I, I, I don't defend. I don't like. I don't. What I don't like taboo that at all. So I think actually I'm gonna bobble my opponent first, just to see what they've got on top. Because if they have a land on top, I think I'm gonna thought seize them. If they don't have a land, then I don't think I'm gonna thought seize them. And I think I'm just gonna go for it. Yeah, I do stream a lot of Shadow. I stream, I stream all kinds of Shadow. I want to stream the uh, the tribal, the tribal zoo Shadow here, one of these days. That's one that's on my, it's on my bucket list. So that is a terminate. So we're gonna be able to terminate one of my shadows regardless. I think I'm just gonna like be an adult. Take one of their shadows. Try the Freeman bottle of Grixis built to the FNM. That's the version that I would play. If I was gonna play it, like the next time I stream Grixis, I'm gonna try that. I either like Grixis with with uh with that list, or I like Grixis with like two Liliana of the Veils in the main deck, I think. I just want it to be more threat dense. Okay, so next time we can go double threat. Wow, this is bold. Because next time we just six our opponent. Street Wraith, okay. Street Wraith, Jesus. Okay, so they play a 4-4. Four, four. So let me think. My opponent takes three, goes to six. I play Death Shadow Time of Life. Then my opponent has to deal with all three of my threats because they're lethal. My opponent finds a fetch land, because I'm not gonna fetch, my opponent doesn't block. Because I don't want to grow this. I want to make it so it's not lethal. Well actually, I'm gonna fetch either way. Because my opponent would have to go land push terminate to win so I am gonna fetch either way alternatively I could fetch a basic well it's kind of the cost of doing business playing death shadow so what do I fetch I'm fetching no matter what so I do have to fetch do I fetch basic Four, puts into five, makes her death shadow an eight, which means I'm not dead. But I still probably have to block. I think either way, I'm gonna make it so they have to deal with all three of my threats next turn. I lose to push, land, I lose to push land turn or push land um whatever it is push land terminate I lose to that but such is life but all three of my creatures are lethal. And this is just like textbook, this is the difference in the decks. Like, if this game goes much longer, my opponent's gonna win. 
I lose the team of Battle Rage. But I seriously doubt they kept Rage in. Get that weak shit out of here. Let's see what we had going on next. Lingering Souls. Alright, so let's play another match. While we're waiting for this, let's plug all these again. So, I'm sponsored by Gamer Craze, which is a store up in northeastern New York that has great prices. They buy and they sell at TCG Low and they buy at competitive prices in order to make it so that like the college community can play so you should look into them they'll have their website up soon and i will link it in my description but you can google their facebook page and you'll find it um this stream is also brought to you by card hoarder you should check out card hoarder um if you have any magic online needs as they're the best bot chain in the business and great for the community you should check out my youtube page which is linked below if you ever miss any part of the stream then that's you should look at that. Um, viewing on YouTube is the second best way to support me, um, aside of subscriptions and follows. And if you ever want to connect with me to talk about Modern, you can follow me on Twitter, which is also linked below. So we have a medium hand here, but I think I'm going to keep it because we have double discard spell. Let me catch back up with the chat, see if I missed anything. My strategy to combating five color humans is Death Shadow plus Team of Battle Rage. That is my plan. I'm gonna keep this. You often have to like, you have to thread the needle in that matchup. You have to be like, when do I play slow and rely on Tarmogoyf? Okay, so we're playing a mirror. Or playing against Lantern, which is gonna be just absolutely fantastic and great for the uh great for content creating no i think so there is a so i'm gonna go off on like a little soapbox here there's a like there's a thing that happens uh you you say is not dead thank you for the follow there's a thing that goes on with Professional with people in Team or Battle Rage. Jeez, pro. Yeah, so what was I going to say? People want to play feel smart cards like Snapcaster Mage, which is a fun card to play with. It's also a very feel smart card that wins you later in the game if you can get there. People don't want to play dumb combat tricks, which is what Team or Battle Rage is. It's a dumb combat trick that wins you games. We have an Inquisition. I don't think we want another Inquisition. I think we just want to get on the board. So this is going to find me. If this gets stubbed. We're going to we're going to enter the sad zone. Like Team of Battle Rage is not a feel smart card, and I think that like frustrates a lot of people, and that's why people don't necessarily play it. All right, so we got to take the threat. At least both of our hands are bad. Doesn't even give them delirium, which is sweet. Crusaders are beating against any single fatal push deck. God. Looks like they found a threat. Battle Rage wins you a lot of games you don't have any business winning. I should have played a land. This is a mistake. This is a terrible mistake. Yeah, we're just going to take this. Fetch a basic. And from this position, I need to top deck a Liliana. A Liliana, probably the first person to draw Liliana the Veil wins the game. I would assume.
All right. I guess we're gonna offer up Homeboy. Because again, if I play this Tarmogoyf, if I wait to play this Tarmogoyf, and my opponent draws Liliana of the Veil, I can't win. My human experience. Yeah, you should be playing, you should be playing TBR. No, I'm not Caravan SS. Nope, that is across the country, my friend. My opponent appears to be knowing what they're doing. They're fetching conservatively here. Draw step. You're getting commanded. Or not. Yes, we are playing the IQ tomorrow, which is what I'm hammering out here. I guess I shouldn't auto yield. I would assume that this is dead. Yes. I will auto yield through my opponent's turn. Actually, I'm gonna get some coffee and I'll be back. Yep. I've had a lot of coffee. I'm not really proud of how much coffee I drink, but like, you know, some people have problems. All right. I think my opponent should get Grim Flare. If they, they should get Grim Flare or Tarmogoyf. Lingering Souls, Lingering Souls is the absolute stones. So chat, we have some good news. When I went in there to visit my wife, get her some coffee she was looking into our finances and she says that we are going to be able to live so like I'm pretty excited about that hostage takers a mid-range kind of just a mid-range card um owl mug thank you very much hostage takers just a mid-range beater and it also steals snare and bridge and artifacts We're getting enough. If we if we find a street wraith, I'm hard casting it, like no doubt. Well, well, the cool thing, my favorite thing about hostage taker is it kills ensnaring bridge. So I don't want to take any more damage. I think we're just going to deal with this. I assume my opponent's last card is like a removal spell or team or battle rage. I don't think it's a stub. Because if they, it was a stub, then they would have traversed for something that would turn on stub. Yeah, dude. Street Wraith is true name nemesis in this matchup. You can't block it. You can't really kill it. Yeah, I stole I stole a worm coil engine with it yesterday. Aw. 
My opponent's gonna kill a true name nemesis. Well, I need to like learn how to call my draws better, because like I've been playing I haven't been doing well today. It's probably another removal spell. Going to play my land in case my opponent ripped another dismember. It would be fairly catastrophic if my opponent dismembered my shadow. I've seen this deck a lot more online recently. Come on, dude. You can check out the deck list in the stream decker there, Ice McNasty. Ice McNasty, again, thank you for the follow. Powder, I think I missed you. Thank you for the follow again. I hope you're still in the chat. So we can't kill our opponent. That's pretty good. We could have gone for it there, like gotten a street wraith, and then gone for the kill, but I don't think it's necessary. And if my opponent's got a removal spell, it's just like wicked bad for the home team. No, I don't think that I don't think they're gonna start airing the Santa Clara GP for a while. Atticus Black, subscribe with Twitch Prime. Thank you very much. Enjoy your emote. I appreciate the support. Subscriptions are the best way to support my content. Thank you very much. Uh, Fulkerson is following. Thank you very much. There we go. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty normal. Like, that happens in this matchup. I just outdrew my opponent. Didn't sit there and out, didn't outplay them, didn't do anything. That's just how the cards fell. So we want all the grindy elements. We want the white land, hostage taker. Cut the red land. Then I like cutting one of these and I like cutting two of these in the draw and then keeping my, bringing one back in while I'm on the play and cutting the discard spell. Yeah, Atticus Black, appreciate the follow very much. I appreciate the, the subscription. I should run in and tell Megan that we're going to be able to live our life even more. So I'm going to keep this hand. This is like, we have a, just a total chance of getting run out of the gym here, but this hand is like, Super powerful if we get there. Yes, I do owe everybody. I do. I had somebody do a donation deck list for a Pillapala, but I do not have it um, set up yet because it's it's a little above my credit count. So the best way to do that, best way to improve to get my credit count or to up my credit count is through follow subscriptions and views. So I appreciate all you guys helping that out. And as I'll play whatever deck that you guys want, as long as it is in within the budget limit that I have for card order. If you ever do want me to play one of your decks, you should definitely message me before doing it. Because I want to make sure that I can. That's just wrong of my opponent to do, to bobble me there. All right, so... We are going to get Overgrown Tomb and Traverse for our basic. Taking Traverse is like, depending on what my opponent's hand is, like my opponent has Lingering Souls, then I wouldn't have taken Traverse because you can fight these, and then if you have another discard spell for this, you're in good shape. But Taking Traverse is like super greedy. If I draw another Traverse or I draw a land. I have been thinking about it there. There's Six Sigma. I might play a version of that pretty soon. Oh, my opponent's gonna just like cry. All right, we're gonna hold that fetch land and we're not gonna get stubbed. 
because my opponent could go like Blue Land into Cycle Street Race Dub. Um, I have had some thoughts on it, and I think there's a chance that I might play something like that, maybe in a little while. I want to move, I want to move away from Death Shadow decks a little bit because that's what I've been streaming pretty, pretty consistently. We got about to have a Liliana off. This is a big problem. I am gonna just get Grim Flare into play. You need to have some way to kill Delve creatures. That's really important. I'm gonna lose this Liliana. That's how this game is working out. I can feel it. Yeah, you're gonna you're you need um Yeah. This is pretty bad. Yeah, this thing's just gonna kill me because it goes a six. And I need to just run this flare out instead of playing my planeswalkers. Um I think you need dismembers. Um, I would cut. Um, I would cut like one more bobble if you're going to play Thought Scour, and I would change your veil to Last Hope. So your Last Hope to Veil. All right, that's good for the home team. They return Grimflare. They know I have Veil though. Oh, you're talking about Liliana's defeat, Adam? Okay. So let's hope my opponent's last card is not... is not a... whatever it is. A push. So I think I just play my own Liliana. Have him sack a creature. And then I offer to trade Grim Flares to attack this Liliana here. Attack Liliana the last hope. Oh, they had a push. That's like super, that's super bad. Because now they can just Liliana bring back. I wanted to play Veil because like with how my line's going to work, I'm going to go, if I had played Last Hope, tick up, get rid of Death Shadow, attack, um... My opponent just takes it and then they kill my last hope. I would rather, I think Veil is better than last hope. It's gonna be Death Shadow. Took my little off. Yeah, this has been, this has been pretty savage. I think my opponent should rebuy Death Shadow. Yeah. Good play from OP. Yeah, we just got we just got like absolutely savaged. Yeah. We're good. We are we are good. I think you want you want Sultai, because you're already playing you're gonna play some Tasters. You're gonna play your Tarmogoyfs, you're gonna play your Death Shadows, you got Snapcaster Mages, so you got enough little dirtily dudes. Veil is just like another way to kill big morons. That's why I like me some Veil action. We're going to run it back the same. I have my Godless right in. Yep. Oh, I was talking about how I wanted to change one of these. Oh, God, don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, God. 
Again, my moto is just all over the place today. Change it to this while we're waiting. I also think you want Hostage Taker in your deck, Six Sigma. I'm a big fan of that card. The more that I play it, the more I like it. It's just good in like a lot of scenarios. Like it's not very good against fast aggro decks, but it's very good against long grindy matchups. We're coming back slow and steady. Slow and steady wins the race. All right, we are back. I would like to play first. This hand's pretty dangerous, but we get a redraw. We have two of our best cards and a discard spell of one. So I'm gonna keep this hand. I really don't like mulliganing in this matchup because I just don't, I don't want to. Like if this was a fetch land, this would be like a snap here. But I really dislike mulliganing in this matchup. Gosh, my moto is just like tweaking it out today. Oh, we're back. My opponent mulliganed. What do you got, sir? Cycle. Okay, so that means they're land light. Okay, so I really don't want them to land. Grim Flare is like the real problem. Lilian is also a real problem, but I'm gonna have one, two, three draw steps to find a way to deal with that. So I'm gonna take this. And Bob on their upkeep. It's a really, it's a very threat dense draw. This polluted delta doesn't find stomping ground, which is kind of nice. Oh, it takes Liliana. So now my traverse is turned on. I should have traversed there to be mana efficient. So I need to play two threats next turn. One of my threats, I'm probably going to traverse for a street wraith so that I can best handle this Liliana. I have my own Liliana, okay. That's pretty good, because that means my opponent Liliana's, I actually just Liliana now, that's sweet, okay. I'm all over the place this morning. This gets breeding pool. We veil our opponent. And this right here, this is the best. You know, until someone draws Lingering Souls, this is the best card in the matchup. When someone draws Lingering Souls, this card gets invalidated pretty quickly. But my Liliana is going to be better than his is currently. If our opponent even has a lane. 
they looked at my top card and they cast Thoughtseize. I really don't like that that play because like if I draw a discard spell, then it's pretty bad for them. Traverse for Green Fresh Land, Traverse for Death Shadow, Tick Up Liliana. That was a pretty fortunate draw. This is so annoying to do in real life when people like aren't chill about it. Cause I just like sometimes I just like show my opponent these three cards. And I'm like, I'm going to do X, Y, Z, A, B, and C. And if they're not, like, super... Like, if they're not playing counter spells. So, like, again, my, let's say my opponent rips a Fatal Push here. Okay? They go to push one of these Death Shadows. Then they have to get rid of Terminate or the Liana. Which Liliana is the right card to get rid of from them. Okay, so they terminate one of my homeboys. Okay. Draw step. And I think I'm going to fetch a tap land to make this a two turn clock. Canton. Yep, learn to play in Canton, New York at Gamer Craze. They're currently working on fixing up their site right now. So I think, yeah, I think my opponents, they're not dead. Like they could find a removal spell. Yeah, they just drew a land. Like, sure, dude. I drew more lands than you did. You, you bobbled wrong. All right, let's play for the 4-1. I'm actually going to run in... I'm actually going to run in and see what my wife's doing. Just say hi to her. So I'll be right back. back into it. Oh, MTG Cold Brew Wingo. Thank you very much for the uh, for the host. I appreciate you. That's a rum. So I learned this, like my friends always used to say, why do you say that? It's stupid. And how I learned what uh what the quote unquote um yeah dude adam that's my that's my like yeah thank you very much sir how'd your stream go that's my line like my wife just keeps in there telling me that we're gonna that we're not broke she's like we're gonna be able to survive and i'm like that's that's just absolutely fantastic that is exactly what we want to hear. So we're going for the we're going for the four one here in our second league after going two three, and then if we do that, we can open ourselves up a chest. Guinness eight man draft. My opponent's name. My opponent's name is Sweet. So 
So I'm gonna keep this. We're on the play. We get a bunch of interaction on one. So even if we don't hit a land drop for a while, pretty good. Did almost 12 hours. Played modern for a while. Then finished up with three CEO and cube. Good, man. I love me some cube draft. This is a risky hand. But we've got like 17 draws for next turn. 21 if you count Street Wraith as a redraw. 25 if you count Traverse, which is a land. So we have 25 draws and to hit our next land drop. And we can actually kind of survive, you can kind of survive if we miss a land drop for a turn. What'd you play in modern there, Mr. Cold Brew? All right, so we're playing against a four color control deck. Wow, Lingering Soul. I'm gonna talk about two cards I don't wanna play against, Snapcaster Mage and Lingering Souls. Teamer Breach. What do you play Teamer for? Is that for Ancient Grudges out of the sideboard? Or is that for Tarmogoyf as well? Slamming Emmy on turn four. Do you have a ramp card? Like you playing like a bird or something like that? Okay, we missed the land. But. Fatal push. Just gonna take a snap. The nice thing is, is that Grim Flare is pretty good against Lingering Souls. Oh, Aetherworks Marvel? Oh, wow. That's pretty sweet. So let's check out this again. All right, so we're gonna take, so my opponent is gonna be able to Lingering Souls next turn. So should I? I probably should go Path. So take Push, Fetch Land, Stub. Hmm. I think I'm gonna push, I think I'm gonna stub a Lingering Souls. So I'm trying to get a friend to play that modern, so he has the core for Legacy Sneak, he's been a bit uppity about it, but the deck seems very good. Oh no, I forgot to. So my best draw here would be like I guess I'm gonna have to take a turn off. Mr. Durward. That's not bad. I guess if I play that, it basically ramps me, which is gonna help, and I can get rid of one of these cards here. My opponent's probably I think my opponent should main face the path. Tweaked it a bunch. It's got like serving the conduit and stuff in that deck, if I remember right. Just taking a shot, okay. More than likely gets my Goyf. Oh, wow. Probably have to start taking Lightning Helixes at this point. I'm gonna push one of these. Keep my life to lie. Incentivize them to path to exile my time of life. Yeah, 
Yeah, dude, looks sounds pretty cool. That's pretty good. So again, we're just trading with all their removal. Gonna give them a target with his lightning helix that's not my head. It's like a spell clutter. Alright, he looks my head. So they can't go terminate path, clear my board. Which also gives me delirium, which I'm pretty amped for. Play land. Okay. What is that? What is happening? I just have another burn spell. Oh, I milled my black source. I, a, I milled my green, my, my red source thinking. Let's just have another lightning helix. Make sure they target it. This is a weird, uh, okay. They got it. Weird deck for my opponent, but just bodied me. Cool name. Okay, so we want the counter spells. We want this. We don't want red. Ditch some of these. Ditch a couple pushes. Ditch the decay. Probably the dismember. I'll keep a Miser's, I'll keep one more push. So now we get some hot Sultai White action. Okay, would like to play first. And yeah, this hand's pretty good, we'll keep this. Another one lander, but we get a lot of information out of it. Sorry, I had to. Okay, so I don't remember if our opponent showed us if they had discard spells or not, but I guess we'll just split the difference here. Give them a look at one. Lightning helix. Okay. Gross. That is so bad. I guess I just deny them the information. If we ever do get to Geist, that's going to be good. The cards in the middle land, so they're going to be able to Geist us. Yeah, it's just a four color good stuff deck, I guess. Got to take Bob. We can't answer Bob. We might be able to throw enough blockers in front of Geist. Jeez, Crow. So my opponent's going to cast Geist next turn.
Gotta take one of the Geists. Then hope our opponent misses for two draw steps. And we can block the Geist with Tarmogoyf. This Geist is going to make quick work of us. Alright, land. Six. Six, four is not. Ten. Yeah, we're just dead because of the uh, Lightning Helix next turn. Gosh, that's, that sucks. Alright, we'll open up this last chest and then we're going to call it a day. I appreciate everybody for hanging out today. Let's open up this chest for our for for attack us Atticus Black. Uh oh, we opened up a mind twist that's not worth anything. Alright. Thank you once again. Um thanks everyone for showing up. I appreciate your support. If you want to see the rest of the stream and you guys miss something, you can check out my YouTube page and uh, you can follow me on Twitter to know when I go live. And if you need Magic Online uh, singles, check out Card Order. Thanks everyone and have a great rest of your day.